read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance welcome back lady listeners hey lady listeners welcome welcome we have Evie Mitchell this week, which is just, I cannot express to you how organized she is. I <laughs> just, love it. Doesn't it make you feel like a little bit inadequate when an <laughs> author is this together? You're like, fuck, <laughs> my life is like it. It's control. easier. I get frustrated when I'm trying to find things or mm-hmm. quotes and some are just so put together. It makes it so easy. I can just mm-hmm. find things, but yep. it's easier for them too. The more put together you are, the quicker and better of things I can get. Yeah, <laughs> the, the easier it is for us to promote. Yeah. But like, I, I think back to the beginning when we started writing and like oh, how God. scattered we were with like, here's the chapter and we would just email. <laughs> we would just email back and forth. We we're like, oh what are we God. doing? I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. We would just email a chapter to each other. We're like, what is this insanity? We didn't have Dropbox. We didn't have shit. No, <laughs> we just yeah. like. We'll figure it out as we go. And like, <laughs> it took years going back and redoing most of the shit that we fucked up in the beginning yeah. because we just had no clue what we were doing. We're just like, this, some, this is fun. Some are so on top of it. And like, it's a new name. I'm like, this is a um, pen name. Yep. This right. is the, way too together. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Like, I think you can tell mm-hmm. right away when it's an author writing under a new name, when it's an existing author. Because exactly what you said, they have their shit together, their teasers look nice, their the, the lingo down. Uh huh. Yep. They'll have hashtags and everything ready to go. Like, yeah. Uh, this is a seasoned author, correct? This isn't their debut release. <laughs> I remember when I used to get like nosy and I would like, ooh, let me see if I can figure it. Now I'm like, whatever, let's go. <laughs> this, yeah, I know. It's in the, you know, <laughs> most care. of the time it's impossible to tell who it is, you know? <laughs> So it's just like, ah, oh, forget it. There's so many now, like for just for hang it up. But, um, you know, I, I love that we have Evie this week, though, because it does make it super easy. She brought us the books called The A-List. And on her, like stuff that she sent us, she has everything broken down. And we're going to talk about like her book bio to this one you're about to listen to. All the stuff she has on sale, what's free. Like, like it's, it's, it's beautiful. I almost want to share this Dropbox link because it's so pretty. (laughs) Like, look what she did. (laughs) But, um, so I read a couple of books, uh, this past week, one of which I talked about last week that had started and it's called Mm -hmm. just like heaven by Trelina Pushy. I think it's Pucci, Pushy, P-U-C-C-I is her last name. It is a cliffhanger, and I talked about it last week because I messaged her before I read it because it sounded really good, sounded kind of different, but I used to read a lot of dark romance, and I haven't in a long time, and I thought, you know what? Like, I'm just, you know, she is such a sweet person in general, and she's really funny and cute on social media, and I thought, I'm just going to give one of her books a try. Why not? And then this one sounded good, so I messaged her to make sure, you know, there's them happily ever after, and she was like, yes, and the second book there is. I, and I, it's not an audio. I had to pull out my Kindle that had dust all over it, charge it up, download a book. I forgot. I had to hook it up to my Wi-Fi. That's how long it has been since I haven't used this Kindle. And so I sat down and read it and it was so good. I was obsessed, obsessed with this book. I don't even oh think you God. can really talk about it. So give stuff away. Yeah. It's like it, one of those crack reads. Like it's like, yes. oh my God, oh my God. It's seriously like every single chapter. It was like, holy fuck. And I do want to preface it since you kind of told me, I'm an in reader. She kind of told Mm -hmm. me the whole story, which I might read once it's all out. Yeah. Yeah. It is safe with the exception, but it's Mm -hmm. safe with an exception that even I would read. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that if that's something other people are worried about, Mm -hmm. so that because I know I can be a bit stricter if anybody's listening thinking yeah about reading it. Mm-hmm. and so like uh, a friend of ours that she's like you um and I told her I was, she said she was gonna read it too and she was like okay I'm definitely gonna read it then because I explained like I did to you like okay this is the safe with exceptions I will say um the couple of things that I don't feel like are spoilerish that are really um great about the book 
is that it's you're immediately drawn to these characters. It's a Romeo and Juliet retelling, and it's um, but it's more of like the Claire Danes, Leonardo DiCaprio, where it's modern day, but it's really dramatic and over the top. And this is kind of the same way. And so, you know, it's like they're soulmates. It's like they have, they were destined to be together, even though they were torn apart. Like there is no other choice except for them to end up together. Like that's yeah. the only scenario that works. Fate's just going to keep leading them. Yeah. To yeah. Each other. No matter, no matter how they try to avoid each other, they can't, it just will not happen. And so all the steps they have to take in order to be together are just fantastic. And it's like, you know, it's young love, but it's also super like it. I told somebody, I think it was like, um, like Romeo and Juliet meets gossip girl kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, like really cute, trendy, fun. But, um, you know, it reminded me of, you know, I was trying to compare it to a romance, like <sighs> something I had read before a lot like paper princess. Mm -hmm. I would say a lot like that, where it's like the whole drama and the friends and, you know, because the guy has three brothers that are two brothers. There's three of them together and she has her two best friends. So it's the three of them. And it's like all the dynamics of the friends and the family and the two of them and like how the friends are trying to help them hide it and to see each other. But even they have to like, like even they have to lie to their friends. Like it's just so, oh, so good. The dynamic is so great. So it comes out like Trillina's on the podcast with us the week the second book comes out. But I've already like I message her every day. I'm like, has your editor gotten back to you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just I'm insane for the second one. It's going to be so good. So so I read that and then I had another um, reader recommend a book to me. And this one, gosh, I wish I could remember your name. I'm so sorry. It's on my Instagram messages, but I can't pull it up right now. But um, the book is called The Dollmaker by Mary Burton, and it is a dark, twisted murder mystery kind of thing. There's detectives and stuff. So it's about this detective, and he's separated from his wife, and she's like a forensic scientist and does like autopsies and stuff. But he's so dedicated to his job, and he's very cold and like straight-laced, And but he was obsessed with her you know, his wife. And so she is like, I'm going to go take this job in the jungle for like eight months. And, you know, if you want me to stay, you need to tell me to stay. And he was like, I won't stop you from doing your dreams. Like, whatever. That's what you want to do. You should do it. And so she left and she was like, I gave him this ultimatum, but he didn't choose me. And he's, but in his mind, he's like, I'm letting her. Yeah, yeah. Like he couldn't stop her from going because he was like, if that's what she wants to do, I don't want her to be with me if she doesn't want to be with me. You know, if she wants to go do this, that's fine. But like, so she comes back and he's, he thinks like, and the whole time there's like this really fucked up murder case that's happening. Mm -hmm. And so like the whole time um, he's like, she's back because she wants to file for a divorce. And so, and that, so they meet up and she's like, oh no, I want to work things out. And he's like, fuck. <laughs> so it's like, he meant, he was mad at her for so long because he thought she wanted to get divorced and he wasn't going to do it. So he was just like, he went in like guns blazing. Like ready and, for a fight. Yeah. And she was like, oh no, we're going to work it out. And he's like, now what? <laughs> you know, it's like the wind was as. So it's like really cute so far. So the reader that sent it to me, she was like, I know you like this author. So I think you'll like this. She's like, it's really twisted, like um, murder detective stuff. But she's like, but there's hot sex. And I was like, you have my attention. <laughs> So I that I was super Mary excited. Well, we yeah. Those in a while. I know. So like I said, this one's the doll maker by Mary Burton and apparently it's a series. So this is the first one. It was on sale on audio. Cause that was what she said to me. She was like, it's on sale today on audio. You should grab it. Listen. I was like, fuck it. I don't have any audios right now. Let's do it. You know, I had already gone through all the ones I bought. So, so I want to ask, um, what was the book that Jessa Dean sent you? <laughs> what was the one where you're I like, actually don't know what it's me. about. It's in her taboo series. So mm -hmm. I actually, it's so weird. It's like I get a feeling or something mm -hmm. because I went and posted on her profile yesterday. 
What did you I say? I was like, like one of those peeking in, like, you know, emoji. <laughs> like a bit emoji. Yeah. yeah, I dropped it on her wall. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I really need a hero in pursuit, stalker. And she's like, I'm just going to text you tomorrow. <laughs> oh, no shit. Yeah. Oh, wow. And so she sent me one, which I'm super excited because I had like a couple of busts mm -hmm. over yeah. the week. I had a bust from the Read Me Romance group. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody what? recommended a book in the group. Oh, no. And so I was like, oh. But I think I went in with really high expectations. Was it somebody, an author that you had read before? No. Somebody, okay. like a, a listener dropped in mm -hmm. a book about a lizard man. Oh, I and saw were like, that. I'm highly recommending this. So mm -hmm. I went in with very much like... um. It's going to be dirty. Ice planets. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no, and it wasn't like just there. recommending this. So I went in there. I'm like, here's my next ice planet. And I'm yep. like, oh. Mm. I just wasn't as like, I guess I'm very Pacific in my reads, as everybody knows. Mm -hmm. So like, I expected him, even though he's a lizard, to look at her and be like, oh, this is why I've never been attracted to anybody of my own race. Because <laughs> I needed this human delicate person. You know what I mean? Yeah, to immediately yeah. be like, bam, bam, bam. I uh -huh. mean, he was sweet and stuff, but I'm just not into slow burn. I'm just mm -hmm. not a slow burn girl. How long was the book? It's probably like 150 pages. Oh, okay. But still, I want yeah. that kind of stuff. I'm like, on, on, on. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I did another shifter book from another series that I've enjoyed. But mm -hmm. but I did do two other. Like, I got the Jesse Dean book, which I'm super excited about because I know those are that's always solid. Mm -hmm. yep. And I did um, Danny Watts had a new book, which hasn't had a new book in forever. Really? Yeah, and it's kind of like notice. a actually student teacher kind of thing. Fuck yeah. We just did one. We have one out now. Teach me. Yeah, I was and gonna say if you're listening, it's out now. We talked about it at the end of last week's episode, but we kind of rushed it because we forgot. So but, student teacher book, Teach Me by Alex Riley. It's out. This now. one was well, it's in that Cherry Falls series, and you know how they're all like named oh, after street yeah, names? Yeah, uh -huh. Hers was so like Hers was Coming Avenue. She even spelled it <laughs> T-U-M. Uh, I get it. <laughs> so I really enjoyed that. And then what else? Oh, Rochelle Page had a new book out. But she hasn't had a book out on her own in a while. And that Sweet. was cute called Body Search. I really enjoyed both of those. I'll put those links in there if you guys want it. And then the Jessa Dean one called Sir Richards should be out mm -hmm. when you guys hear this. Because she told me she's loading it like tomorrow. So Oh, yeah. So you guys will have that. I'll just put the title. I mean, I have a link, though, because I don't have the link when I make the show notes tonight. But yeah. I'll put the name in for you guys. That sounds hot. I like it. I'm down for it. Um, We had, you know, we've had some TV and stuff that we watched a lot lately. I think last week I was telling you about that Squid Game show that mm -hmm. we finished up. Um, I did see today that Sex Life has been renewed for a second season. Um, the one that our, our friend BB Easton wrote, um, mm -hmm. she has got, yeah, they renewed it for a second. So they're doing a second nice. season on it. I don't think they announced that right away. They were just seeing what the reception of it was. Yeah. So I thought that like, that was really great. So, and then I also saw that in Bridgerton news that the, the trailer for season two has come out. They've already dropped it. I don't know how much filming they've, if they finished or what, but I saw someone like, put on the Netflix uh, thing on Instagram. Someone commented, please, Shonda, please, God, release this early. <laughs> please, please help <laughs> us. And it was like 10,000 likes. <laughs> it was so funny. I People were just like, yes, agree. <laughs> so that I'm super forward, look, looking forward to those. Um, and then I started uh, the Great British Baking Show. Has started I've seen you. Up. Oh, my God. So I tell myself every season I'm going to wait and I'm going to binge it at the end. And then I don't. The first fucking day it drops, I'm like, I got to watch it. I can't wait. I couldn't do that either. It's Not for a wait. show I'm waiting for. <laughs> it's so good. But, like, that's the thing was, like, I, I text um, two of our author friends and – um Amila Vane was one of them, and I text her because we both love this show. It's like the second it comes out, I mean, she's on like Pacific time, and when she like it's like three in the morning or something when it drops there, and she watches it like instantly. I'm like you're <laughs> insane, <laughs> but she just freaking loves that show. But um, oh, hold on, sorry, my headphones are messed up. 
Let me do that again. And then I messaged our other friend, and she said that she was like, well, I'm just going to watch it at the very end. I'm just going to wait and binge it. And I'm like, how do you have that self-control? And she's like, I don't know, just like uh, just like obsessive neuroticism or whatever it was. And I was like, oh, okay, so it takes a disorder <laughs> to be able to have that kind of self-control. <laughs> Got it. Got it. <laughs> But, um, gosh, it was so good. Like, it's so pure and sweet and innocent. And Doesn't it make you so Ugh. hungry? Yes. So that's what I said. I was like, I'm going to look ahead and see what every week is. Because this past week it was cake week. Thankfully, I had cake on hand. So <laughs> since it was my husband's birthday. And then. Um, I went out and got cake last night at, like, 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> no judgment, girl. No judgment. Um, but I want to look up and see what every week is like when it's bread week and it's pastry week. I just want to have things ready because I know <laughs> you're going to get a kick moment, for it. I'm going to be like, fuck, I want some bread. <laughs> so, but it's just, it's my favorite show and it just makes my heart so full and warm. Uh, it just, it, it makes me feel wonderful, but I love feel good stuff like that where you go in knowing it's just going to be like, <gasps> it's going to be easy. It's going to be so, so good. It's going to be wholesome and fun. And like, I'd made it an event. I got a bath. I like drew a big bubble bath. I got like my stuff ready. I had something to drink. It was water, but you know, like I, I just haven't, I, the only, I never watched like the stories on like Facebook or something. I clocked mm -hmm. in for a second and I seen it and I was like, oh, that looks so nice. You're like, had your <laughs> bath out. Uh -huh. had the tv on i was like i'm telling and like people comment and they're like oh my god i'm so jealous and i'm like i don't even know what to say because i'm like yeah i'd be fucking jealous if I saw this <laughs> too. but i don't i don't like i don't have a way to explain to people the hardship i went through to get to this fucking tub like you don't understand i like, remember looking at tubs forever with you oh jesus like I mean, I went years without a tub. I went years with, like, a tub I couldn't even fit in. Like, my ass was too wide to fit in it, so I couldn't even sit down when I had one. We went in where, like, we only had a shower for a while. Like, in one of the houses we rented for, like, three years, it only had a stand-up shower. And the other I don't one. how you do that. Oh, my God. It was miserable. Like, I was like, my entire life, I have never had a tub this nice. <laughs> like, and it really took the whole, my whole 40 years led it's to like this. It's programmed into my head when I'm sick, I'm supposed to get in the bathtub. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. if I've got a headache, if I've got, it doesn't matter. Like, mm -hmm. it was always my mom's answer to everything. Take it, a bath. It, it should be. That's the greatest thing ever when you so don't So I don't know. I would get overwhelmed if I got sick and I didn't have a bath. Oh, my God. Oh my God. It was hell. You know, my son's that way, which is, it annoys me now that I'm older. And I'm like, you don't need a bath. Go. <laughs> get out of here. I need it. <laughs> you know what, though? Like, I remember one year for my birthday asking for, a, like, a hotel room with a bathtub because mm -hmm. I wanted one so bad and we didn't have one. And I was like, can you just, like, maybe, like, rent a room for the night with a tub? <laughs> like, it was so pathetic. But, yeah, so when you – if you see me in those photos with my bathtub and my TV set up, like, it took a while to get there. But, man, it's fucking nice. <laughs> um, my girls had Girl Scouts tonight. Um, it started back up this season. It's, it's time to go again. Um, and tonight, like one of the girls wasn't there. I teach the daisies, like the youngest ones and she wasn't there. And I was like, oh, okay. So I just kind of got to kick back and just sort of be a parent and have to teach a class. Hmm. And so I got to watch like the other two teachers interact with my kids, like in separate groups. I'm like, it's fucking assholes. They behave for other people. What is that? <laughs> what is that? Like, why do they listen to their teachers and they're well mannered and they're calm and they're raising their hands. I'm like, where are these fucking kids? I see that's house? really common, actually. I mean, I guess I'm thankful that they behave in front of. They're not strangers. I mean, they're the teachers, but like, I guess I'm thankful that they're well behaved in front of that. But I'm just like, who is this well mannered child that I gave birth to? Because I don't get to see this one. I don't know. You haven't even got the teenagers yet. My kids are pretty mindful, generally. Yeah. I don't like, know why. I got lucky or something. <laughs> oh, my They're, God. Do you want to give a tattoo update? Speaking of lucky. <laughs> she actually 
did it really good. Like we really? went and she gritted it and how fast was it pretty fast when they no, did it? No, it was not as fast as I thought it would be. Really? Oh shit. Yeah, I like, it'd be I like a... like, she was like, no, hold on. I'm like, Jesus. And Isabel's just like, secret mm, and bear. But I had a feeling that she would be pretty good because we've had yeah. a few medical things she's done before, and mm -hmm. she's a lot like me. We just grit and bear it. Yeah. Dude, when she fell, when she was skateboarding, <sighs> where were you guys at? Colorado. Wow, she fucking ate it. And like she was torn up, like yeah. one down one whole side of her body. We actually were talking and you were about like, that. She's that okay. Day. I was like, how is she okay? She looks so jacked up. Yeah. yeah. God, oh, I forgot. Well, we actually like talked about tough. that exact same thing on the way to get her first tattoo. Remember when we talked about that story? Yeah. Yeah. She was actually really sweet because I said when we were talking about, you know, lately sometimes she'll ask me why some of the stuff I do with. Peyton is different yeah. than what I did uh -huh. with her. Yeah. I don't know if we've talked about it before. So, you know, yeah. I grew up, for some reason, I used to think I had to do certain things because that was how my parents do it. Yeah. Did it. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I got older, I'd be like, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell your dad you said that. <laughs> you know, like, come on. That's not that necessary. Yeah, or, you know, yeah, kind of yeah. even with stupid stuff, like with how she dresses or how yeah. just, uh -huh. I thought just, you were supposed to do certain like things. Like haircuts, shit like that, where you're like, it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So... I had actually said to her, I said, you know, one of my, we were talking about, we were talking about the story. So that's one of my biggest fails. When I look back as a mom was for some reason that day when they'd gone skateboarding, because mm -hmm. I'm used to them just going out here and mm -hmm. we live on a flat drive and they go out and skateboard and they don't really wear a helmet or a pad or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's just flat surface. There's not even a hill. Yeah. And they were like, we're going to go skateboarding. I'm like, okay. And I didn't even thought we're out in Colorado. Like we're on a hill. <laughs> and she wasn't even out there like five minutes. I was like, I always look back and I'm like, God, that was so fucking dumb. Yeah. I didn't even geared up. And she was actually like, oh my God, no, it wasn't even your fault. Like she got no, upset that so I look cute. back on it and get, I know. Oh, that's sweet. I was like, oh, she got really upset. That's cute though. Aww, Which is nice off of coming after, coming after off of some of the stuff we've gone through with the tattoo, you yeah, know, with me yeah. being like, so it didn't even occur to you what I would feel. And she's like, why yeah. would I think about what mm -hmm. you feel? Yeah. And then she died because <laughs> we murdered her. <laughs> so it was just but, nice to hear. Well, how was it like uh, with the session? Will, they, will she have to go back like multiple times then? Yeah. We go back in six weeks. She said she okay. thinks it's only going to take like four. She was like, this is coming up really easy. Oh, well, that's good. So um, when we were at Girl Scouts tonight, Lydia had to fill out this thing she's working on. I think it's her bronze certificate she starts working on this year. Um, but she uh, had to do this thing where she interviewed two women. Mm -hmm. And so she did me tonight when we got home and she was like, OK, like what in the Girl Scout law does my mom like represent? And blah, blah, blah. And she was like, you know, she's um, considerate and caring. And like she wrote the, down the parts of the Girl Scout law and did it on there. And it said, would you want to be like, would you want to take on the role your mother does or your this person does? And she said, no, because she works a lot. <laughs> like, or she does a lot. She said, no, she does a lot. And I was like, yeah. what do you mean I do a lot? And she was like, you're always doing stuff around the house. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I, I, I see you. <laughs> At least she notices it. That's know, something that right? they take note that you are always doing stuff. Mm -hmm. At least. Right. I know. Oh my God. I right, think it goes unnoticed. Yes. I'm sure it does at some point, but yeah. at least for tonight, I got that. <laughs> So let's talk about Amy Mitchell a little bit. Um, she's got the book, again, she brought with us, The A-List. Um, the series is Thor's Shipbuilding Series. I'm in for that. I love yeah. it. The genre is contemporary romance, and the release date is the 4th of October, 2021. So I'm guessing that's when she's going to do the ebook for it, maybe? Or is that next? No, no, we're recording ahead of time. Duh. Today's the 27th. Okay, so yeah. So this is when it's going to release is next Tuesday. Um, let me read you her book bio. Fierce Romance. Evie Mitchell is a 30-something woman, she, her, living in Crohn's, living with Crohn's disease. She loves dirty books, sassy heroines, and heroes who know how to treat their partners right. 
She lives with her husband, their sausage dog, and an ever-growing collection of book-related mugs. When she's not writing, Evie loves curling up in the sun with an excellent book and a cup of tea. Evie specializes in fiercely inclusive happily ever afters. I love it so much. That is adorable. It's super adorable. Um, the A-list blurb for this book. So this is the book bio which you're about to listen to. And it says, Gabby, I think my husband wants to explore kink. Rune owns a bookstore, which means he supplies me with all my reading needs. Only lately, those books aren't your mom's reading list. They aren't even your best friend's reading list. They're the kind of reads that you finish in bed with one hand under the covers, then talk about with other reading obsessed people in closed book groups on the internet. But here's the catch. I'm kind of into it. Satan better help me because God, God's ready to forsake this little deviant. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So um, it says you can download um the a-list free until the 11th of october she's got it on um her subscribe page we'll have all the links again in the show notes um she's doing a sign paperback giveaway it's open internationally um and she's got a list of free books on here as well um the book um thunder thighs is free from october 4th through the 7th um these are all first in the series too clean sweep is free from october uh, fourth through the eighth, and then the X list is free from the fourth to the eighth of October as well. So, the first in those three series: Thunder Thighs, Clean Sweep, and the X list. And again, we'll put all this in the show notes. I and, love that. Um, her so new you can get release a feel for each of the series, and if you want, you can go on from there. Exactly, it's like the perfect way to do that. So you can try it out. I'll be like, hell yeah, I want all of these. <laughs> um, her newest book, her new release, is not my type. Um, the blurb on that she's listed below. I'll read that on Thursday's episode since we've been chit chatting the whole time, but you can find her, um, you can subscribe to her newsletter on, um, subscribe page.com at slash Evie Mitchell. Um, and then she's got a Facebook group too. So you can join all that. And again, we'll put all those links and everything. She's got like every single social media and stuff or every platform listed on here. This is like the most thorough thing I've ever gone through. And it's Perfection. Maybe if you're listening, <laughs> just sh chef's kiss. Perfect. All right. Well, let's send you into the first installment of, um, of the A-list, and we'll see you on the other side. Bye. Bye. This is the A-list, a Thor's shipbuilding slice of life by Evie Mitchell. Read for you by El Sonali. Chapter 1 Gabby My fingers hovered over the unmute icon on my laptop, anxiety churning my stomach. Am I really doing this? With a deep breath, I hit the button, interrupting the chatter between my sisters-in-law. I think Rune wants to explore kink. My blurted statement halted the conversation in our monthly video chat. He keeps giving me romance books that include BDSM, and they're super hot. Like, really explicit, but also really romantic. Four faces stared out at me from the laptop screen. Their expressions, identical looks of stunned surprise. And, I continued determined to admit everything. While I'm totally open to it, I'm a little timid about how to do it safely. Do any of you know more about things like rope play and spanking and all that stuff? My four sisters-in-law continued to blink at me, as if I had lobbed a bomb into the chat room. Well, I kind of did. A sex bomb. Falling in love with a guy from a large family had its downsides, like the time his eldest brother, Gunner, walked in on us mid-coitus, or the time his sister, Liv, gifted me the Karma Sutra for Christmas, which was promptly stolen by Rune's Nan. But it also had its upsides, like the fact his sisters and sisters-in-law had welcomed me joyously into the family. They'd set up monthly face-to-face -face chats and a group text just for us ladies. 
The chat contained everything from sex tips to reading recommendations to baby burping techniques and complaints about overly aggressive shop assistants. These women had become my safe space, a place where I could be uniquely feminine and totally honest without any censure or judgment. Liv, in predictable fashion, flicked a lock of her long blonde hair out of her eyes and leaned forward, answering first. I'm not sure whether to be proud of my little brother, thrilled for you, or freaked out. Either way, I have suggestions. Why am I not surprised? Ella laughed, rolling her eyes. Gabby, what books? Are there any you'd recommend? Let me get a pen. I can recommend a rope guy, Laura offered, reaching for her notebook. I have his number somewhere here. All right, hold up. Astrid said, wrinkling her nose. First, ew, this is my brother we're speaking about. Second, Liv, how do you have suggestions? You shouldn't have suggestions when this shit involves your baby brother. Third, Laura, you have a rope guy? I chuckled, leaning back in my seat, some of the tension easing from my shoulders. The Larson siblings were a funny bunch. Gunner, Ella's husband, was the eldest of the five siblings and lived down in Capricorn Cove. They'd met one dark and stormy night in her bar and been in love ever since. Laura and Eric lived in Cape Hardgrave, like the rest of us, tending to their brood of adopted twins and their three-month-old daughter who seemed incapable of sleep. They'd met on the set of Laura's show, The Queen of Clean, after Eric had found himself in a pickle trying to raise his adopted twin boys by himself. The Queen of Clean had fallen for the master of mess, and the rest, as they say, was history. Liv followed in age, but not in maturity. The woman scared and delighted me in equal measure, and was an absolute powerhouse in the film world. Her production company was fast becoming internationally recognized for high-quality, unique, and female-centric stories. Liv had married Ian, a stereotypical red-headed beast of a man who was actually a goddamn Scottish laird. She liked to trot out her official title semi-regularly. They'd been thrown together following a surprise pregnancy, some misunderstandings, and a lot of sexy times. Liv referred to it as her awakening. Astrid was the second youngest sibling and the novelist and screenwriter in the family. Her husband, Robbie, was an actual movie star. And thanks to Liv's production company funding the movie adaptations of Astrid's best-selling novels, they both owned Oscars. Which left Rune, my husband. Despite being the youngest brother, my man was the biggest and broadest member of the family, towering over his siblings in all his blonde-haired, blue-eyed glory. In my opinion, he was also the most attractive of the family, but I might be biased. We'd been married for a little over two years now, and I loved that he was funny, loyal, loving, and full of sexy, repressed energy. The guy had been a virgin before he'd met me. But goodness, did he make up for lost time. Eager to please, delightfully so. Which brought me to now, and my questionable request for assistance. I hope I don't regret this. What gives you the idea Rune wants to explore kink? Ella asked, leaning into the screen. I mean, I'm totally here for it. God knows Gunner loves a little play in the bedroom. This one time we... Ew, ew, ew! Astrid interrupted, shaking her head vigorously, hands clapped over her ears. There are things I do not need to know about my brothers, including but not limited to what they like in the bedroom. Also, Laura, seriously? A rope guy? Is a rope guy something a household requires? Should I ask Robbie if we have a rope guy? She leaned away from the screen, calling over her shoulder. Robbie, do we have a rope guy? No. He called back. Do we need one? 
She turned back to the screen. We don't have a rope guy. Laura shook her head. Of course I have a rope guy. I'm married to a man who builds boats for a living. Boats require rope. Oh, is boat rope different from bedroom rope or binding kidnapped victims rope? Astrid asked, her gaze taking on a familiar dreamy quality. Now you've set her off. Liv sighed. She's going to go plot a whole book involving rope and be useless for the rest of this conversation. But it's a good question. Let me look. Ella began to type on her keyboard, her gaze turning squinty at the camera as she searched for an answer. My sisters-in-law are all a bunch of nuts. Okay, back to me, Liv said, pointing at her chest. My first suggestion is to get him to talk to Ian. We had a little play weekend a few months ago. The man is talented with his tongue. Again, these are conversations I do not want to be having about my sibling's sexual prowess. Oh, shut up, Asti, Liv said, rolling her eyes. You and I have had multiple conversations about Robbie's abilities in the bedroom. This is true, Laura nodded. And we got the monthly updates on sexy time scheduling when you were trying to get pregnant. Fine, I'll just pretend we're talking about someone else. How about Hot Jay, the carpenter? We all sucked in a breath at his mention. With the impending birth of their daughter, Ella and Gunner had needed to build an extension on their house. Pressed for time, Gunner had admitted defeat and called in a contractor. Hot Jay had arrived. And for three months, we'd been treated to delicious updates from a hormonally horny Ella. I miss Hot Jay, Laura sighed. Hot Jay really knew how to hammer some wood. I still stalk his Instagram, Liv admitted. Ian says he doesn't know what I do online, but I think he knows about Hot Jay. It's not cheating if you take the sexual frustration out on your husband, right? Okay, Ella returned to the conversation. Google tells me that sex rope is different to boat rope. Gabby, I think you're going to need to do more research. This seems a little complicated. I opened my mouth to answer, but Liv interrupted. Don't worry. I've got this. Gabs, you and Rune are headed to Capricorn Cove next weekend, right? I nodded slowly, suspicious of her tone. Yes. Should I be worried? Not at all. I just know that there's a kink club in town. A quick search showed that they do couples beginner bondage classes with a specific focus on accessibility. I've just purchased you a ticket. Sorry, you did what? Oh, the A-list, of course. Ella laughed, shaking her head. I totally forgot about that place. Yes, you have to go. That place sounds so hot. A girlfriend of mine went and said she had the best experience. Actually, maybe Gunner and I should come as well. Oh, that could be fun. We could turn it into a double date. My stomach began to churn, my palms growing sweaty. For the love of God, fuck no, Astrid groaned, her head dropping into her hands. No one wants to see their brother in a sex club. Hmm, good point, Ella sighed. Fine, we'll go the weekend after. A child began to cry in the background, her face twisting. <laughs> Damn, be right back, I need to check on. Her computer screen froze capturing her tiny baby bump as she stood. All right, I just looked up their health standards. They're certified and approved. Laura held up her phone to the camera. The Board of Health even gave them a certificate of recognition two years ago. Astrid laughed. Only you would worry about health standards at a kink club. I'm not supporting sending my favorite sister-in-law into a dank and dirty sex dungeon. Favorite? Astrid blinked. Did you say favorite? Excuse me? Since when is Gabby your favorite? 
Liv added, her glare frosty even through her computer screen. Ella's computer screen unfroze, a toddler now sitting on her lap. Why is Gabby the favorite? What did I miss? She came and babysat for Eric's birthday. It's been the most sleep we've had since Ada arrived. Ella bounced her daughter on her knee, my niece laughing in delight. I sincerely hope you also got some sexy times. Of course, but we also slept for a full glorious ten hours without any children attempting to get into bed with us. I cannot tell you the last time that happened. We got our sleep on, then our freak on. All right, you're forgiven, Astrid said with a grin. Having just spent two days looking after a vomiting child, Gabby would also be my favorite. Hint, hint, she added with a wink. Laura, I'm still in awe that you're contemplating having a fourth kid. Honestly, that weekend with the twins and Ada was more than enough to make me question my sanity, I said, shaking my head. Seriously, the amount of body fluids alone was enough to make me question if the kids were possessed by demons. Gabby, check your email. I sighed, following Liv's direction, shaking my head when I saw the ticket to the accessible rope class. God. I groaned, pressing a hand to my face. How am I going to explain this to Rune? Explain what? I startled my head jerking up to see Rune standing in the doorway to our bedroom. Shit, is that Rune? I think it is. Do you think he'll like your gift? Maybe you could. With fumbling fingers, I hit end on the call and slammed the lid of my laptop shut. Silence descending in our bedroom. Gabby? Rune crossed his arms, giving me a worried frown. Tell me what? Shit. Chapter 2 Rune My stunning wife always took my breath away, with her yards of curves, straight black hair, and deliciously plump lips, not to mention her humor, positivity, and contagious happiness. Gabby constantly made me hard. There wasn't a moment when I didn't think about kissing every inch of her delicious skin. Um, Gabby's cheeks took on a ruddy hue as her gaze avoided mine. Nothing. Nothing? Bullshit. I pushed away from the doorway, beginning to stalk across to the bed. If it's nothing, then why are you blushing? I'm not. No? I reached out to cup her cheek, grinning as the heat on her skin warmed my palm. Hmm. Definitely blushing. It's just... She trailed off. A very uncharacteristic Gabby thing to do. Just... I asked, cocking an eyebrow. Liv booked us into a sex club. My body froze. Well, not a sex club. Or is it? Gabby rushed on. It's a kink club in Capricorn Cove. They apparently do classes on beginner bondage. You keep giving me books where the guy ties up the woman and... Wait, you think I want to... Don't you? I stared at my wife my body reacting as my mind struggled to keep up with this revelation. Only if you want to. I mean, it's a different experience than reading about it. Gabby gave me a slow blink. Are you saying that you don't want to try it? It crossed my mind once or twice. You seem to get a kick out of books with that shit in it. I grinned leaning in to press a kiss to the sensitive skin on her earlobe, nipping at it. And I enjoy the perks. She sighed, shifting to give me greater access to her neck. They do get me hot and bothered. Gabby liked to work out that sexual frustration on me. 
and I like to bring her home books that would encourage her to do it over and over. The Perks of Being a Bookstore Owner She bit her lip. I want to, it's just... I settled on the bed beside her, content to wait for her to decide what she wanted to share. Gabby wasn't backward in coming forward, which meant that this mattered to her. I find the idea of ropes and spanking and exploring our sex life quite thrilling. It gives me all the tingles. But I'm nervous, and I never get nervous. What are you nervous about? I asked, propping my head on my hand. She lifted one shoulder in a half shrug. What if I hate it? What if I can't do things? What if we do something wrong and get hurt? Her lips quirked. I'm not taking you to an emergency room for a sex injury. I chuckled, reaching out to stroke my fingers through her long hair. It's good to know your marriage vows end at sex injury. I leaned in, pressing a kiss to her shoulder. You know I'd never pressure you, right? She nodded, her fingers beginning to trail up and down my side. Then this is a moot point. If you hate it, then we won't do it. What if you love it? That's not fair to you. I rolled my eyes. Gabby, if you don't like it, then it's not enjoyable for me. Haven't you figured that out yet? She huffed. As for your other fears, I tapped her laptop. Let's check out this club and see what we learn. We can work out the rest as we go. It's not weird that we're doing this? I rolled us until I was hovering over Gabby, our lower bodies pressed together, perfectly aligned. The only weird thing about any of this is that my sister purchased the ticket. Please never allow her to do that again. As Gabby laughed, I kissed her, memorizing her taste. Oh, and one more thing. Gabby tilted her head back cocking one eyebrow in question. No one touches you but me. I slid a hand between us, lifting the skirt of her dress to cup her pussy, growling when I found her bare. Naughty girl, I whispered, nipping at her earlobe as my fingers brushed through her wet curls. I could be naughtier. I grinned down at my wife. I have no doubt. My fingers found her clit beginning to circle. But let me have some fun first. If you insist. Her legs spread, granting me better access. Oh, I do. Chapter 3 Gabby Rune pulled the car to a stop, both of us staring at the nondescript building. Is this it? I checked the address on our printed ticket. Looks like it. Neither of us moved. You sure you want to do this? Rune looked over, a small smile playing at the corners of his mouth. Nervous? Hybrid butterfly bats were flapping in my stomach. A little. He reached out, threading our fingers together. You remember what you told me about discomfort versus aversion? I chuckled, the butterfly bat settling. Discomfort can lead to growth. Aversion is a warning sign. Is it aversion or discomfort? Discomfort, or maybe just nerves, I squeezed his hand. It's just a class, right? We don't have to do anything if it's not for us. Rune grinned, leaning across the console to press his forehead against mine. Exactly. We kissed, and I tasted anticipation on his lips. I shoved him away with a laugh. Let's do this. Outside, I hovered at the door shifting my weight from side to side, 
as Rune hit the button for the intercom on the side of the building. Hello? Hey, this is Rune and Gabby Larson. We're here for the class. Come on in. I'll buzz the door. We're in the green room. It's at the end of the hall. You can't miss it. There was a small beep, then the door inched open. Here we go. I laughed, following my husband as he led us down a long corridor, following the signs that directed us to a room at the rear of the big building. Welcome to the A-list. A curvy woman dressed entirely in latex stepped out of a doorway to our right, her hand outstretched. I'm Lee. I took her hand, Rune letting me lead. Gabby, and this is my husband Rune. She nodded. You mind if I shake his hand? I blinked. Um, no, that's fine. She grinned, catching our confused glance. It might seem weird, but he deferred to you, so I wasn't sure of the dynamics in your relationship. She flashed me a wink. Defaulting to asking is our way of doing things here. That makes sense. She gestured down the hall. Shall I show you the place? We nodded, following as she led us through the club, explaining how it operated and the various rules. Your teacher today is great. He's studied rope for a few years and has intimate knowledge of accessible play. She pushed open the door to the green room revealing a large, mostly empty space, with a series of gym mats spread across the center of the wood floor. Four curtained cubicles were set up on one side of the room, while the rest of the space remained open. The walls were painted a dark green, against which the rope stood in stark contrast. I leaned into Rune, anxious anticipation simmering in my belly. Hey, Jay, I found your first couple for today. This is Gabby and Rune. A man popped his head out of one of the cubicles, a wide grin on his face. Hey, guys, take a seat. I'll be with you shortly. Oh, shit. It's hot Jay. I stumbled, Rune catching me as my prosthetic slipped. Whoa, you okay? I looked up into the trusting gaze of my husband, his expression one of loving concern. I'm fine, I managed to choke out. How's the leg? I shifted, putting my weight on my prosthetic. It's fine, doesn't seem to have moved. He let me go, watching as I took a hesitant step forward. Don't worry, Lee said, inclining her head toward the mats. This place is all about accessibility. We'll talk all about how to play safely and how to accommodate different needs. Her phone gave a beep. That'll be more students. Excuse me. We settled on chairs surrounding the mats, Rune casually looping an arm around my shoulder as we waited for class to begin. Rune, there's something I have to tell you. That the teacher is hot, Jay? He asked, shooting me an amused grin. How did you know about Hot J? I hissed, keeping my voice low. I saw the texts. Gunner was losing his shit about the videos Ella was sending you lot. You think you can hide anything from me? Babe, please. You should know better by now. I huffed, crossing my arms over my chest. To quote Lady Catherine de Borg... I am most seriously displeased. Rune shuddered, his arm flexing across my shoulders. He leaned in, his lips caressing the shell of my ear as he said, Stop. You know I can't resist some Jane Austen roleplay. Quoting when I can't do anything about it is just torture. I grinned, dropping one hand to squeeze his knee. I'll make it up to you later. You better. Jay made his way to the middle of the mats, setting up ropes and various props as the classroom began to fill. I watched as couples filed in, surprised and delighted by the variety of people. A couple in their late 60s sat down on one side of the room, 
the woman fussing with her leopard print dress as the man spoke to her, gesturing at the ropes as he parked his walker. There was a party of three in their early twenties seated beside them, one of the women settling her walking stick across her lap as she and her girlfriend chatted, both of them in funky matching t-shirts which read, Romance is my second favorite R-word. Reading is my first. The man sat on her other side, his arm casually draped across her shoulders as he listened to their conversation. They look like our kind of people, Rune muttered. I elbowed him in the side. We're here to learn, not form a book club. The first rule of book club is that there is always an opportunity to form a book club. I rolled my eyes as the final couple settled in the seats beside us. Hey. The guy who wore an eye patch turned to us. I'm Sid, and this is my wife, Elena. We're on our honeymoon. I'm Rune, and this is Gabby, my wife. Great to meet you. Sid rubbed his hands together, shooting his bride a grin. Elena won't admit it, but we're really keen to get started. She loves a bit of kink in the bedroom. I glanced at Elena, unsure if I'd describe her as keen. The woman looked like a stereotypical school marm, starched button-up shirt, twin-set cardigan, and a knee-length, perfectly pressed skirt. Where her husband was all boundless casual energy and joviality, she looked like the definition of a prim and proper rich housewife. Um... Yeah, same, I guess. Rune's body shook beside me, his eyes dancing with barely contained amusement. I subtly elbowed him again. Hot Jay caught my attention as he strode to the middle of the room, a length of rope absently dragging across his palm as he looked at Lee. We ready? He asked her. Yep, this is the last one. A woman using a wheelchair settled on the other side of Rune, her gaze locked on the instructors. Huh, I thought this was a couple's class. I wonder if she's with Jay. Jay stepped forward, an enormous grin on his face. Welcome to Accessible Bondage 101. In this class, you'll learn the building blocks of accessible bondage, including its history, basics, safety, and a few ties today to get you started. He glanced around the room, his gaze piercing as he considered us. This is a fully accessible class. If there's anything that doesn't feel good, or any way we can assist you to feel more safe, comfortable, or included, please let Lee or myself know. He held up the rope length. All right, let's begin. It wasn't at all what I expected. The class began with an overview of the history of rope play and the terminology used in Western kink before shifting to the different types of rope that could be used. The reason we use and teach use of rope in this class is because it's more adaptable to different needs. But if you want to try cuffs or leather or other forms of restraints, have at it. But I suggest starting slow and working up. He picked up some short lengths of rope. Now, rope choice is often down to the rigor, but when engaging in accessible play, it might be up to the bunny to choose. Jay said, passing around a small sample of jute. It's something that should be negotiated before a scene begins. Like I said earlier, open communication. Discussion of where to touch and where not to. Sensual levels, sexual touch, and even rope type should be considered. You want this to be a positive experience for everyone. He lifted a piece of plain white rope from his box, holding it up. For example, if your partner has sensory concerns, cotton might be a better option, as it's soft on the skin and tends to be gentle. It also doesn't have much of a smell, generally. If you're someone who wants to engage all senses, hemp might be better, as it has a very unique smell. You should also consider burn rate when choosing rope, Friction is important, as you might or might not want to mark the bunny's skin. You know, I murmured as I passed a sample to Rune, running the small length through my fingers. 
Being called a bunny is going to take some getting used to. Makes me feel as if I'm about to be hung up and dissected. At least you're used to hopping. I barked at a laugh, quickly smothering it when heads turned our way. As I was saying, Jay continued holding up a colored cord. You can use different colored nylon to achieve different results. For example, young man, the older woman across from us interrupted. I don't want to stop you, but will we be getting to the tie soon? I'm not getting any younger. Jay laughed. Thanks for the prompt, Mel. Let me finish off on why rope is important and some of the safety features and issues you'll want to try to prevent, like rope burn. Then we'll get to the good stuff. Jay quickly wrapped up the theoretical component of the night, then moved on to the physical demonstration. Frankie, are you happy to help me with this scene? He asked, turning to the woman sitting next to us. Sure. She rolled forward, her long pink hair swaying as her chair stopped at the edge of the mat. Now, we're going to chat through all the various things I need to know, and which Frankie wants me to know, before we get started. Before you begin a scene, understanding how to engage in safe, consensual, enjoyable play is essential. Here at the club, we call it the A-list. A-list? Frankie asked, raising an eyebrow. Answer list, or access list. Whatever you want to describe it as, it's essential to a good scene. He shot a grin at Lee, hence the name. Lee began to dim the room lights, leaving a single spotlight to illuminate the mats. So, Frankie, Jay said, beginning his questions, do you prefer to use your chair? She hesitated her fingers flexing. What are my options if I don't? Jay gestured at Lee. In the scenario where people prefer not to use their equipment, we get them onto the floor or a soft surface. You want a place where people are less likely to injure themselves if they fall. In this scenario, we'd ask you to start on the mats. Lee would be the spotter or chaperone, and I'd be the rigger. My job is to look after the ropes, and your pleasure. Lee's job is to ensure that you are supported, and to assist me if I need it. He grinned. It's easier for two people to support a passed-out-from-pleasure person than one. Frankie flushed, her head tilting back as she boldly met Jay's gaze. All right, let me get on the mat. She transitioned from her chair onto the floor settling in the middle of the space, adjusting until her legs stretched out in front of her. Level of sensuality or sexuality would be my next question, Jay explained, beginning to slowly circle Frankie. I might say, are you okay with kissing? Frankie hesitated, then nodded. What about sexual touching? For example, if I do a certain type of harness, I might need to move your breasts. I can achieve that in a very perfunctory manner, or I can touch you in a way that adds to pleasure. I'm good with sensual. Jay nodded as if making a mental note. How about sensitive areas, or areas where you have no feeling? Is there anything I should know about or look for? Frankie ran through her various needs describing areas he should avoid. Hmm. As this is the first time we're working together, for this scene, we'll keep your clothes on. If you want to change that next time, we'll renegotiate. They discussed safe words, safety, and what aftercare might look like. Then Jay reached out, stroking her cheek. Any questions for me? She shook her head. Are you ready, Frankie? Yes. Her breath caught as he shifted in behind her, Jay's body crowding hers. Let's begin. My body tensed watching them, my thighs pressing together as the scene began to unfold. Jay treated her with care, his movements sensual and deliberate. 
His hands ran along her body, his voice a caress as he began to explain the ties and knots as he shifted around her body, binding her. Beside me, Rune shifted, his body rigid in the shadowed room. Please be as turned on as me. Please be getting as hot as I am. That's a good girl. Jay praised as Frankie's eyes drifted closed, her expression relaxing. Describe what you're feeling. Pressure, Frankie whispered. Even that small noise, loud in the silence of the room. Tension. Heat, perhaps. She hesitated, her eyelids fluttering for a moment before they remained shut. Freedom. Jay finished the harness, his hands moving to gently guide Frankie down to lay flat on the mat. For a few minutes, the whole place was silent. Our focus on Frankie as she breathed on the floor, her eyes closed, her face serene. Then Jay broke the silence by moving, shifting to support Frankie as he began to slowly unwrap the rope from her body. His murmurs of praise meant for her ears only. God, this is like watching the beginning of a love story or some really amazing porn. Only they're both fully dressed and this is entirely about her pleasure. Aftercare. Jay explained, his voice low and soothing, is as essential as the negotiation. Lee crouched on the mat, placing a blanket over Frankie, supporting her. If you'd like to find a cubicle, you'll find some rope and a printout of some beginner ties. If you need anything, call. Lee and I will make our way around in a few minutes to check on you. With a final glance at Frankie, I allowed Rune to tug me to my feet, leading me across the room to one of the curtained stalls, one thought clear in my mind. I want what she's having. Chapter 4 Rune I hauled Gabby into the cubicle, flicking the curtains closed with a rough tug. With barely restrained desire, I backed my gorgeous wife up. My hands falling to her ass, my lips rough as I demanded kiss after kiss from her greedy lips. Fuck, I muttered, grinding my body against hers. Fuck. I take it ropes are something you like? Gabby panted, one of her clever hands slipping between us to cut my cock. I grunted, sucking in a deep breath in an attempt to find some level of control. Shit. I muttered, pressing my forehead against hers. Gabby chuckled, the sound sending a vibration of arousal shooting through my dick. Someone scratched at the curtain. Are you two okay in there? Anything we can help with? Lee asked from the other side of the closed curtain. I stepped back from Gabby, reaching for the printed instructions which showed how to form the knots and slips into a harness. We're fine, Gabby called as I tried to pull myself together. Let me know if you need anything. We will. I listened as Lee moved to the next cubicle. Do you want to be top or bottom? I asked Gabby, picking up a length of rope, my back to her. Don't you mean rigor or bunny? I shot my gorgeous wife a grin over my shoulder. Which one, babe? She considered me for a moment. You want to tie me up? More than anything. I grunted, unable to voice what I wanted for fear of influencing her. It has to be her choice. She moved to the mats, lifting a small chair as she went. Gabby's voice had taken on a husky note, her skirts settling around her as she took a seat on the chair beside the mat. 
I think I want you to tie me up. Thank God. Leg on or off? I asked, my voice low. She looked down at her prosthetic. Off, she decided, leaning forward, her hands moving between her limb. Let me. I brushed her hands away. With slow, deliberate movements, I pressed the button to unclip the pin and remove her brightly colored prosthetic. I shifted to place it within reach, but off the mat. I did the same with her socks and liner, determined to kiss every inch of skin I revealed. Gabby's breath caught, her thighs clenching at my touch. On the mat or chair? I asked my voice gruff. Uh, Matt, I think. She stuttered, placing her hands on my shoulders. Still crouched before her, I lifted Gabby off the chair, sliding her down to the floor. My woman was more than capable of doing this herself, and I knew if we were in any other situation, she'd have shoved me away with a laugh and completed the transition herself. But here... In this quiet cubicle with the warm, soft light caressing her golden skin, Gabby allowed me to lead. It was a heady experience. Don't blow this. Think of something else, like juice. No one gets revved up over juice. There's guava and watermelon and orange and kale. Kale? No one likes kale. Think of kale. Think of fucking kale. Bringing myself under control, I moved the chair off the mat, returning to Gabby to pick up a length of rope. Same safe words? I asked, referring to the ones we used at home. She nodded, a flush darkening her cheeks. Anywhere you don't want me to touch? Her lips quirked into a smile. No. My blood began to burn. Shit, Kale, 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 Kale. Touching? Her voice dropped to a low whisper. Whatever you want, Rune, I trust you. A low moan worked its way over the partition wall, filling our cubicle. We both froze, eyes locked, heat building between us. Rune? Hmm? Tie me up. Fuck yes. Welcome back. Hey. So that was the first installment of A-List. Again, Evie Mitchell is doing a paperback giveaway. It's open internationally. Um, all those free books and all that good stuff, it'll be down in the show notes. Just hit info on the episode you're listening to right now. And also check our social media platforms. We're going to have all of this posted during the week with um, just links to her stuff. It'll be in our Facebook group, Read Me Romance Headquarters. You can grab it in there as well if you want a clickable link. So. Yeah, if, I think if you go to quick, quick links on our um, bio on Instagram, I think it's all there too. You can go to like the newest audiobook this week and everything's right there yep. at your fingertips. So check right. that out. I guess tell them what to do. Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance. Read, read me romance.